Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another arcade game repair video for you today. Today we're going to work on a monitor. We get monitor problems a lot whenever we first get games in. And this one has a kind of unique thing going on. So we figured we'd film a video. This is a Wells Garner, I think a 7400 monitor. And it has this weird thing where these these blue lines in the background on the screens. Now, those kind of patterns you're seeing, that's a, called a moray pattern. But if you look close, there are blue streaks through the entire image. See them? And it's kind of, it's not all that noticeable, but it's annoying as heck. So, we are going to try to figure out why it's doing that. We've already figured out that it's definitely something on the monitor. So we, uh, we replaced the game board and it still did the same thing. Replaced the power supply, still did the same thing. See how the blue is acting up? So, and see all this? So this green, or the yellow, is areas without blue. So the blue is tripping problems with the blue and it's really strange because it's not uh, it's not universal so you don't just get like the entire image is blue uh, you got too much blue or not enough blue you're getting little lines on everything you see it pretty good there and you're getting it coming in and out it seems to get better after it warms up so it just does this while it's uh, while it's cold so we're going to take uh, uh, some parts off and show you how we fix something like this. Okay, at the same time we've also got this monitor where as you can see similarly everything's really yellow. So basically the blue is completely missing from this monitor but it just happens to be the exact same monitor. It's a Wells Garner 7400 but you can see you don't see the streaks but everywhere there's supposed to be blue the blue is missing. So uh, we're going to try to research that too and see if we can fix that and figure out what it is. Since it was the same monitor we thought it might be an interesting video. See how everything's yellow? That's because the red's working and the green's working. Red and green make yellow but there's no blue. This one the blue is completely missing though so it's uh, it's not really the same thing as the other the other issue but it ironically is the exact same color. So we'll work through both of them and see what we can figure out. Okay, folks, so this is the neck board off of the turkey hunting one. We're going to do it first. So, basically, the, uh, the, the way, here's, there's a little diagram on the back. And I believe, actually, after looking at the, uh, after looking at the, the monitor again, we get so many, and we rebuilt that one a while ago, but we get so many of them, I, you, we lose track of what monitors and what. But after looking at it, it's actually a U2000, a Wells Garner U2000. Now they had four different ones that were really similar. They had the U2000, which was a standard resolution 25 inch monitor. And then they had the U5000, which was a medium resolution. And then both of those weren't the greatest monitors, let's just put it that way. And so they replaced them. Wells, Wells Garner designed a new monitor that was very similar. It's basically based on the same setup uh, that was called the Wells Garner 7400 which was the standard resolution. And then there was the Wells Garner 7500 that was the medium resolution. Oh, and the U5000, the second one I mentioned, you could switch between standard and medium resolution. So, but they ditched that on the 7500. So there was the U2000 standard resolution, which is what this is off of, what the turkey hunting uh, is. There's the U5000, which can be standard or medium resolution. You could switch it. Um, and then they, both of those were superseded with the Wells Garner 7400, which was standard resolution, and the 7500, which was medium resolution. So this is a Wells Garner U2000 neck board. Now the neck boards are all similar on all four of them. They look identical. There's a, if you look really close, some of the stuff isn't populated. And if you look at like uh, this cap right here, that cap is just kind of put in there if you look not even designated with a number. So each one is slightly different little stuff like that. That cap might be missing on some or whatever. And uh, so there's a couple little minor differences between them. I've just screwing around with them. I put the wrong neck board on some of the wrong chassis before. And the difference seems to be something to do with like uh, the, the contrast, just how bright you can get the colors. So if you've got one that you're piecing back together, you can you can look at the, the numbers on the uh, 
actual parts and see where what it's supposed to be for. I'm pretty sure though this is a U2000 neck board uh, and the chassis is definitely a U2000 neck board. And we're getting good color, it's just we're getting that weird thing with the blue lines. So we're gonna, we're gonna check out some stuff. So the way they work is if you look really close, right here, there's a ribbon cable that plugs in here that comes from the main board. So on a Wells Garner 2000, 5000, 7400 or 7500, they all work the same with this part. The color, the video comes in uh, the edge of the main chassis. I've got this little picture on the, uh, on the back of the thing. So it's laid out like this. See how the, the connector is over here for the video? Signal input connector it says. It comes in there and then it just goes straight over to the ribbon cable right here that goes to the neck board. There's nothing in between. It's just a straight connection. So if you've got color problems or video problems on a, on a 2000, a 5000, a 7400 or a 7500, it's almost always on the neck board. Now it could be bad solder on this connector or bad solder on this connector. But if you had a problem like that, what would happen is you'd be missing a color. So like on the police trainer uh, that we filmed the video of, if that, that color is missing, it could be bad, like a bad connection here or a bad connection here or a bad connection here. But this one we're getting video, but it's just screwed up, right? There's lines in it and things. So the first thing we've done is we tried swapping the blue transistor. So the transistor is what makes the blue image on the screen, right? And so we swapped that. Let me see if I can figure out which one is which. Uh, the blue would have been this one. So it's hard to tell. I don't want to bend these too much, and I'll show you why in a second, but this is the blue transistor. We already swapped that, and it didn't change a damn thing. So it doesn't have anything to do with the transistor. So there are, there, all of the images made with three colors, of course. So there's blue, green, and red. Blue, green, red. And then over here, you get, there's another adjustment for green and another adjustment for red. And this is the blue, the green, and the red transistors. And this is the blue, green, and red resistors, right? All of these measure the same. It's like like everything's fine. Now a big problem you have on these if you if you get one and the you've got a color completely missing, look on the back, you can see where these solder in. Look how bad that is. That's the three transistors. You can see how the traces are kind of screwed up. These get really hot and they will it, it, in a, we sell them for home use and people people operate them and things too but back in the day they put these on location and they were turned on 24 hours a day and maybe they made it six months maybe they made it a year maybe they made it two years but it's been a lot longer than two years now you know they just get really hot just running all the time so that they, these boards can get so hot that the tra transistor can actually fall off the board which sounds crazy but it happens um, and you can just see how the, the general brownness of this area over here where everything's been hot. So anyway, you need to get all of those soldered in really strongly where they're making really good connection. And so you can check from the, the pin to the next thing that it's connected to. So by doing that, you're, you're connecting through the connection. You know what I mean? So if you, if you, could, if you could check from that pin up there to here, then you're checking through the connection to make sure it's making good contact. So we've done that, and they're all making good contact. And again, this is the the tro the uh, the uh, turkey hunting one, which with the weird blue lines in it. So I, that wasn't the problem. Another problem that you run into is these are the pretty good pots potentiometers, but on some of them they have these ones that they're just not made as good, and they'll get a spot in them where it's it's a bad spot and so that pot will make it where the color is completely missing these th these this particular kind right here usually don't do that but on the later ones maybe on the police trainer it's got those but on the later ones uh you can see where the pot's just not as nice and then they get a spot in it. again though that what that will do is it'll make the color disappear so we don't have that problem we have lines in the screen so we've got some kind of it's like a a weird voltage going on or something you know um, I couldn't find anything that measured weird um, on any of these resistors or the little diodes or anything. And the, the interesting thing about these is there's three sets because there's three colors. So if you've got a problem with one color, like we have a problem with the blue, you can just measure the one next to it, you know, and see if, like this resistor, there'll be one just like it over here. So you can just measure and see if it's the same. And it's real easy to find some. Like these three resistors, 
Well, if you want to know if this resistor is messed up, all you have to do is see if, how, what this one measures and what this one measures. And if all three are the same, well, then you know this resistor can't be screwed up. So you can go through and troubleshoot by doing things like that. Now, on this one, what I'm going to try next is this is the signal processor. I don't know what the, 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 the official name of it is, but this is what handles everything. If you look down here on this where the ribbon cable comes in, it tells you what each thing does. So you've got the blue signal, the, red, the green signal, the red signal, you've got a ground signal, and this is all coming from the main board. Uh, cont, which I guess means contrast, signal, another ground, uh, the video B+, plus, which is the voltage that, that is running everything, uh, a 15 volt signal, which I believe is probably a power signal for this chip to run off of, uh, ABL, not sure what that is, G1, which is the grid voltage, another ground and then filament FIL that's the heater voltage on the tube now on the, the the tube can be bad too so you might have a bad tube but it, again if you've got a bad tube you're not going to get blue lines on the screen I don't think now I may be wrong this may prove me wrong but what I think's going on is I think this chip is screwing up I think it's leaking inside or something or or one of these little capacitors there might be one I'm going to look on the schematics. There may be a capacitor, for, like one of these little capacitors, you know. There may be one for each color that connects to the chip, and maybe the blue one's tripping, and so, uh, you know, instead of letting in six volts or whatever it's supposed to be doing, it's turning on and off or, or you know, charging and uncharging, and it's making a weird pattern, which is putting the lines on the screen. I don't know. I'm going to look on the schematics just to see if there's a specific capacitor for like the blue. I know these three are the three colors, but the the, the signal I believe runs through that, so I don't I'm, I don't know. So my next my next thing I'm I'm going to try because we already tried the transistor and that didn't fix it. The next thing I'm going to try is I'm going to try swapping that chip because I've had lots of problems with these. A lot of times if you've got a color missing or locked on, it's this chip. So I'm gonna, I've got a bunch of those brand new, new old stock ones. So I'm going to try swapping the chip next. But, I, but before I do that, I'm going to look on the schematics just to look at these capacitors and make sure there's not one that looks like it might have something to do with it. Um, and I'll come back after we uh, figure that out or swap the chip and show you what we're looking at, and then we'll test it out. Okay, folks, so we what I decided was I looked at the schematics, and there were a bunch of caps and stuff in the color circuit. And the, the reason I'm looking at those first is because those fell more and because uh, I've just never had them fail in a circuit. And because since it seems to be heat-related, like it gets better after a while, which usually whenever you have something that happens after something heats up, usually it has something to do with a cap or a transistor or something. So what I did was... I'd already replaced that transistor, so I also replaced this one. And then uh, this cap, this di this diode, this diode, um, this cap, and this little cap, and this transistor. So like the stuff that on the schematics, basically it wasn't a resistor. Usually resistors don't make it get better or worse depending on um, uh, it warming up. So. Uh, I replaced all the caps that were in the the blue circuit and uh, the other transistor and a couple diodes so we'll go plug it in to see if that made any difference or not if it if that doesn't work we'll swap that chip all right folks I am glad I changed course because it looks like it had nothing to do with the chip it was just the capacitors and stuff around the chip so it must have been one of the capacitors or the diode. one of those thing five or six things that I changed um, since it's heat related and it it would clear up like this but it would only do it uh, after the monitor had been on for you know two three hours so I believe we're fixed all the blue lines are gone check it out what do you think I just did the green up a little bit too the green was a little low but it's got a pretty nice picture on it now Look at that. Nice and black with no blue lines. And you got all your colors. There's red, green, and blue in all of the images. So I think we can call that one done. Um, so we'll, we'll move over to the police trainer and see what we can figure out on it. All right, so we turned the police trainer back on. The blue is still really weak. 
or missing completely. So we're going to, if I can, I'm going to reach around the back. Well, let me just show you the stuff in the back first. So this monitor is the newer version that I was talking about. This is a 7400, Wells Gardner 7400, standard resolution. Um, and you can see that it has the different pots that I was talking about. See how those on the neck board there look a little different? These ones kind of suck. They get they get little spots in them where if it's in that spot, there's a it, it just doesn't conduct, so your color disappears. Now, so another thing that it could be is a loose connection on the wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the camera around the front and I'm going to wiggle some connectors, and we'll see if any of that fixes our problem. So like I'm going to wiggle this connector first. All right. See, so when I wiggle the connection, you don't never you never get your blue back. So that's probably a good connection, right? So next I'm going, we've got this, the, 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 the input connects straight over to this, so this, and I'm doing this with this all on, so if you, if you follow me here, be careful. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna wiggle this connector next. Nothing, nothing brings our blue back. Okay. Now we're gonna wiggle the connection on the on the neck board, see how that's making the whole neck board wiggle too. It's kind of making our brightness flicker in and out. But it is not bringing our blue back. Okay, and then the final thing I'm going to try is I'm going to mess with the blue pot. Nothing. But I did get a little bit of something. It, get, it gets slightly darker. Alright, so our problem is the blue signal path isn't going through somewhere, so it's either going to be the transistor or it could actually be the tube, too. Um, if a color is completely missing, it can be the tube. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do what I did on the other one. I'm going to pop that neck board off and we're going to get a look at the, the transistor and try testing it and see if, that's a, if that transistor is bad or good. All right, folks, so what I did was I took the neck board off and uh, I tested um, the transistor. These transistors go bad all the time. But I, trust, I tested the transistor and it tested fine. Nothing was, nothing was messed up on it. Uh, I tested uh, just some other random stuff on the board, like I tested the blue pot to make sure that it, it, you know, it wasn't screwed up like I thought and everything. It was fine went ahead and swapped the transistor just for the heck of it because these go bad all the time. This is a 2SC1507. There's a couple, can't read it of course, there's a couple uh, different ones depending on the neck board. Um, but this is a 2SC1507. We had some new ones in. I swapped it out um, and the blue's back. So I guess the transistor was bad even though it tested good. Now if you watched my video I don't even know if we've uploaded it yet, but we did a video the other day on a asteroids. Had a, had a uh, had an issue. We were messing with the PCB board. I tested the transistor; it was fine as I tested it, and uh, I went ahead and swapped it, and it fixed the board. So I keep getting transistors lately that test fine but are screwed up. And of course, we resoldered the the uh, try to get good solder connections on the three transistors. Now the one that was in there was soldered well and was making good contact, but uh, apparently it was bad. So there you go. So we fixed two. Oh, and I should have said it at the very beginning. If, if you've got a monitor that's never been worked on, you don't want to do what we're doing where you just troubleshoot. You want to, the first thing you want to do is a cap kit where you replace all of the capacitors. Now the little capacitors we replaced on that other neck board, those aren't usually in a cap kit. Um, usually you just replace the electrolytic ones and the main ones. Uh, some of the electrolytic ones don't even get replaced in a, in a cap kit. Um, but uh, so, so if, you, if you've got a monitor that's acting up, the first thing to do is just do a full cap kit. We've already done that on both of these monitors. Uh, every, every one that we sell here in our shop, we, we do a cap kit and like for instance this particular one um, has a new flyback, etc., etc., and now it has a new blue transistor. So there you go, folks. If you're into the monitor repair stuff, hope the video was interesting for you. If you're not into monitor repair, 
well then you 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 don't work on many arcade games because <laughs> that's our main thing we do basically we're a glorified tv repair shop is what it feels like a lot of times um, because you're but if, if you look at it i mean the monitor looks really good that's a pretty good looking monitor um but basically that's a lot of the job is getting the monitors to look right and then what we do the reason that we the blue uh went out is because we left this thing on all day for like a week just stress testing it testing it basically and there that way we know if we sell it to somebody for their house it's been turned on for quite a while so hopefully it'll it'll be reliable because anything that would have failed uh imminently has already failed so there you go if you like the video make sure and subscribe to us uh, leave us your comments below and uh Make sure to give us a thumbs up. That really helps us out. And we'll see you on the next video.